Okay, you guys, so this is my Challenge 35 uh, walkthrough, and um, this is in uh, Pix Insight 1.8, and I'm just going to show you uh, what I did to get my image where, uh, where it is. So um, I actually have a starting ground. In my open recent, I have a project file that's this default settings and I don't know there's probably a way to get this to just load when you launch the software but I'm not sure how to do that but it just kinda gives me my initial starting point it has the processes that I use the most and and they have um, their settings and everything sort of you know different defaults uh, which aren't really that much different than than the other defaults but um, anyway so that's just kinda that's just kinda my my starting point so um, and then I'll open this file the Barnard's E aligned stacked and um, and so first thing I'll do is just pop open the the screen transfer function with the link RGB channels selected I'll push the little we're all gonna die button and the first thing that you can see uh, is that the colors are like completely out right the red is way over the top and and that's probably because I'm using a modified camera I would imagine so um, the RGB channels need aligned and we'll do that in just a second so the first thing that I like to do is the dynamic crop and uh, even though these frames had very little movement between them there's always a little bit of movement so um, I'll just go ahead and, and crop just the very edges there and uh, and then we'll kill that um, then because this is just web stuff I'll resample it down to 50 percent if I go back to the defaults it looks like this so uh, you know I I like to just work with them in at 50 percent scale so because I mostly don't print anything or anything like that I just publish it to the web so just put it at 50 percent and drop the little triangle on there and hit our little resize button so we're done with our resample now rather than using any color calibration and there's so many stars in here the background neutralization you know you'll actually see that in my opinion you don't really need to do that on this particular image because it was shot at a dark sky location and there's no light pollution in the picture and there's there's not really like whacked out crazy uh gradients or anything like that in there either so um so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go straight to this histogram transformation and by clicking this little checkbox right here uh, it tracks the view so now it's looking at the Barnard's E um, and clicking this little button it resets it so that we can ensure that everything is there. Now you notice right off the bat that you can't even really see anything on here well the data you could just barely see it is all compressed against the left wall here and one of the things that's really cool about Pix Insight and the way this works is um, these two boxes here scale this lower region and these two boxes here scale the upper region so if you type a, a different number in here like you know 25 or whatever then that scales this and you can you could go 250 if you wanted to that's probably getting a little bit too big but it's just kind of neat because um, you know you can sort of zoom into your channels this way so we can see that the blue the green and the red here are are not lined up so we're just gonna do that and rather than pulling everything back to the blue um, I don't know exactly where the clipping point is so I'm gonna push stuff sort of halfway so I'm gonna move the blue to the green and pull the red back to the green so the way that I'm going to do that is selecting the blue channel down here. I'm going to grab this guy and slide it over to where it's basically right over the green. And I'm going to take this red channel and I'm going to slide it back until it's 
over that and drop the triangle onto the image. Uh, now you can see that the blue's been moved, the red's been moved, and that's because we actually need to reset um, this to get the, the current view's uh, actual channel alignment. So if I click this guy now with these aligned, um, you can see it does a slightly different stretch now that the, the channels are all lined up and everything, but it looks normal. Um, so anyway, that's a very important step. And on an image like this one where the channels weren't pre-aligned, you basically have to do that. So uh, anyway, that's kind of the starting first couple of steps. So we've we've cropped it, we've resampled it, and now we have aligned the channels. The next thing is that uh, that I'm going to do on this image because overall it looks really good. But there is some noise. Um, the noise wasn't super high on this image, but it's high enough. And we're not going to be doing a lot of stretching because there's not a lot of faint nebulosity or anything like that in here. So um, so we're just going to uh, not really do a whole lot with that stuff. But we are going to deal with this noise a bit. So um, uh, I've been using this A Trouse wavelet transform and I have it set up with a 70 uh, 0 0.750 0 0.5 0 0.250 and if I reset it of course that just all goes to zero so this is the defaults and um, and I do have uh, this little process right here which I try to keep aligned with this guy but um, that just sets those settings up for me but if I if I use those settings, which have worked on lots of other images of mine, if I use it on this one, you can immediately see that it's way too aggressive. I've got rings around my stars. Everything is just kind of blurry and bloated, and it just doesn't work right. So um, we'll go image undo that. And all you need to do if you're using this method is just back off the aggression. So what I did was I select each layer here and right down here it says that the amount is basically a hundred percent. So I'm just gonna pull this back to some relatively arbitrary number. It was way overly aggressive so I think that if we do like 25 to 30 percent or something like that um, it would probably be fine. So I'm just gonna move my little percentage sliders here down to 30. So it's still going to do the same parameter, but just only apply 30% of each one. Uh, and now dragging that on here, we can take a look and see. Uh, that that looks that looks a lot better. It um, I'll go back and forth in the undo, so you can see that um, that the uh, it definitely smoothed our dark areas. Um, our backgrounds there, uh, but not so aggressively that it completely wrecks all the stars and stuff. So I think I'll stick with 30. I probably could even go to 25 or, or even less maybe, but I'm just, I'm going to leave it there. I'm happy with that. And, you know, I'm easy to please. So um, anyway, so that is the noise reduction. And of course, we're screen stretched right now. This is what the data actually looks like so um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is actually apply the screen stretch to the image so I have my image selected I, I pushed my little reset button here and um, I can even get a fresh screen stretch uh, with the little nuclear we're all going to die button and um, I don't know if you remember this from the last video, but basically to get this screen stretch into the histogram transform, which I just find is an easy way to do it, you grab the little triangle and you drag it onto this bottom bar right here. And when you drag it onto the bottom bar, it basically applies this stretch into the histogram transformation, which we probably only need one. And... Uh, and then we can drag that out here onto the image and turn off the uh, 
the stretch there. And you can see that the you know with some of the processing that we've done the uh, the channels aren't quite aligned as much as they were. So I might just go ahead and and realign those a little bit real quick. It looks like maybe the blue can come over a touch and maybe the red can can come back a touch and uh, and so I'll just drop that guy on there anyway so that's that so now we're no longer in any kind of a screen stretched view this is the real uh, the real data now uh, what it looks like so the next thing that I'm gonna do is saturate the image and uh, I can't remember where I learned this saturation technique but you could just open up this curves and click on this S right here which is saturation and just start saturating um, just start saturating the the image like this and you know that that works um, and uh, and it does saturate the image so th that's probably okay but uh, but I actually prefer this using the LRGB combination method because um, the little green and blue and red noise that's in here gets knocked out with this method. So I'm opening the LRGB combination. I'm going under my image menu and I'm going to extract the um, the luminosity layer basically. So then I'm going to click this little guy here to select which source we're going to use. Choose the Barnard's E Align Stacked L, which is this image, this luminosity. Go back to my original image and with RGB unchecked, which by the way, if I reset this, this is what these settings look like um, as defaults. So I'm just unchecking RG and B because we don't have those. The colors are already in the image. We're selecting that lightness or the uh, luminosity layer from here. I'm checking this box that says chrominance noise reduction, and that's what's going to knock out all those little colored speckles in there. And then I'm going to do the saturation here, and uh, and if we do a saturation of about uh, 0.2, then that pretty nicely saturates the image. Um, and of course you could play around with that in my last video on challenge 34 if you go back to that I show you what different stages of this saturation are and you can play with that I mean we could we could um, drop the instance of 0.2 on here and uh, and we could say oh that's not nearly enough or that's too much and we could do oh, okay well let's just do it again with you know 0.15 and just drop it on there I mean it's it's pretty fast procedure so it's not like it's gonna take you hours you go holy smokes 0.15 is insane but that's because I actually stacked it on top of the other one I'd have to undo it first but anyway so you, you get the idea you can you can play around with this saturation slider but selecting the luminosity choosing this chrominance noise setting your saturation around two I found is pretty good at least for the the amount of color that's typically not in my images very much and you can see that the stars we've got nice uh, you know red stars with red halos around them. we've got blue stars with blue halos around them you know this big sort of goldish star over here looks really nice the halo is offset because of a an issue with my telescope but I just have to live with that but um, you know so so the stars look good we could maybe push it um, here let's do it let's do a 0.15 let's just see what that looks like because we might be able to get a little bit more color out of those stars even still without the image looking too bad so um, this looks nice get a little bit more color out of there let's let's back out and see uh, I don't know it's probably a little too much but it doesn't matter we're just gonna leave it okay so this is looking good um, that's the that's basically the saturation I'm going to close that uh, luminance um, you know sort of whatever that thing is that little luminance window back there uh, yeah so that's basically all I did now this HDR multi-scale transform um, 
which the the default settings look like this uh, which basically has all this is just that the lightness and the preserve hue and the de-ringing and stuff uh, aren't checked so um, we can check that and uh, and the lightness basically you know protects the the dark background regions the the two lightness says well we're only really gonna apply this to this luminosity channel um, so you know I don't know you can play around with those check boxes and decide whether you like them or not I've used them on some images and not used them on others and um, and so if I just drop this on here without changing really anything except I did check the little de-ringing what you'll notice right away is that the uh, the stars got brighter um, the the large halo around this right here there's a sort of large halo region that's not that obvious but when you compress it with this HDR thing you see it goes away um, and it basically makes the dark sky a little bit darker, makes the stars stand out a little bit more, and then, of course, introduces this contrast to some of the dark regions. So, you know, I kind of like this HDR scale transformation without anything else selected on this one. So we're going to call that good. Now, if you noticed, I didn't do any star shrinking um, or even any masking or anything. I mean, this is like walk in the park, super easy stuff. And the stars are really small. Um, you know, they're nice and tight. They don't, they don't look strange. Uh, and anyway, that's it. That's what I did for my image. Now this project file, I think I'm going to upload this project file to the group, um, PixInsight files folder, uh, just because I don't know, it might help somebody have a starting point. Um, and this is the starting point that I use. And again, I showed you that I'm not really changing these settings that much, very minimal. Um, but anyway, so that's my process uh, for this challenge 35. Very simple, very few steps. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.